what is a game? Mark Twain saw this issue as a great law of human action. He had discovered a great law of human action without knowing it, namely that in order to make a man or boy covet a thing, it is only necessary to make the thing difficult to attain. At this dark and hopeless moment an inspiration burst upon him, nothing less than a great magnificent inspiration. He took up his brush and went tranquilly to work. "'What do you call work? Why, ain't that work?' Tom resumed his whitewashing and answered carelessly, "'Well, maybe it is, and maybe it ain't. Oh, come now, you don't mean to let on that like you like that.' "'Like it? Well, I don't see why I oughtn't to like it. Does a boy get a chance to whitewash a fence every day?' That put the thing in a new light. "'Say, Tom, let me whitewash a little.' Tom considered. "'No, no, I reckon it wouldn't hardly do, Ben. Oh, come now, let me just try. Only just a little. I'd let you if you was me, Tom. Now let me try. Say, I'll give you the core of my apple. Well, here.' "'No, no, Ben, no, now don't. I, I'm afeard. I'll give you all of it.' Tom gave up the brush with reluctance in his face, but alacrity in his heart. Boys happened along every little while. They came to jeer, but remained to whitewash. By the time Ben was fagged out, Tom had traded the next chance to Billy Fisher for a kite in good repair. If he hadn't run out of whitewash, he would have bankrupted every boy in the village. Work consists of whatever a body is obliged to do, and that play consists of whatever a body is not obliged to do. Mark Twain was superficially similar to the ancient Greeks in distinguishing that work consists of whatever a body is obliged to do, and that play consists of whatever a body is not obliged to do. Even by his day, people were into the work-hard, play-hard ethic such as climbing mountains. Play can also involve doing what is unexpected instead of being led. Parents have long known that children are likely to make up games using the cardboard box that contained the expensive present. Here is a kid. I think he's playing. His toy is a plastic ballistic missile sight. Is this a game? It's a real electronic missile base. You sit at the controls and move missiles into place. You count down. You blast off. You track the flight. In ten years' time, he might enlist and get to play what are called war games. On board a nuclear submarine, he can target famous cities worldwide for destruction with hydrogen bombs. For real. But it's called a war game. When animals bite each other but don't draw blood, we call that a game. So games can be pretty serious, even deadly, maybe not even fun. In our modules ahead, we'll see how the properties of games apply to major sports and learning activities. In the next modules, I'll give you some methods for defining and creating games. For homework for this module, just review the age-old question, what is a game?